You know how it sucks when you just want to create a simple table in Notion, let's say for planning a trip, and you have to create a database, you have to name that database, you have to create the different properties, choose the text property, for example. Well, in the end, in my case, I always resort to using Google Sheets or Evernote because their tables are quite good. And I don't need a full database for my use case. But Notion has heard our prayers, or better said, our complaints. And this is what I'm going to be showing you today. Notion has included simple tables. Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. I'm Daniel and currently I'm running a coaching program for founders to help them master their operations in their businesses. So if this is you, I'm offering free calls to the first 20. So click the link in the description of this video so we can have a chat. And now let's go back to the video. Okay, so in order to show you what we can do with this feature, I'm gonna create a database and a simple table to show you the differences. And by the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how I will be using this new simple stable feature. So let's create our first database, database in line, and let's create here our new simple table. Look how beautiful it is. So as you can see, is what I was saying before. If we were to use this just as a simple table, we will have to choose a name because I don't like this untitled here. And this looks very, very like a database. Okay, so here, of course, we don't have to name the table in, in any way. And also it looks so much cleaner because we don't have this plus new. It's just a simple table. There is no calculates, there is no out of view, there is nothing, just a simple table. So this is perfect for just visualizing data in this way. So now one feature that we don't have in the databases is this one of adding a header column and a header row. This is very useful if we want to compare two different variables against each other, which we cannot really do over here because we always have this title property, which in the case of the table will be this one, which we can leave blank. So we don't need to fill anything here. So databases were thought more for just putting the metadata over here, but simple tables we can do in the X axis as well as in the Y. So now how do we create more columns and more rows in the, in the simple table? So in order to create a row, we will click over here, the same as we will do in Google Sheets, for example, and insert one below. For columns, exactly the same. Click here and insert what to the right. But there is a much faster way that we cannot really do with databases, which is to go here to the corner and just drag and create as many rows and columns as we need. There is also a very cool feature that we don't have in the databases, which is this one over here to fit table to the page width. So when we click over here, the table will spread to occupy the whole space of the table. We will have to do this manually on the database, losing a lot of time. Now, of course, all the content in the table is movable. We can drop this row over here and we can also move columns as you will expect. This is basically the same as what we were able to do here. So there is no big change in this. So now one of my favorite things of simple tables is the formatting. With tables, we can format almost everything. Okay, so let me fill some, some data for a use case. So now with the simple tables, we can format the color and the appearance of the text in these headers. So let's say that we want all the days to be red. Now I'm using the, the shortcut to color it. And let's say that we want to color all of these blue. This is something that we will not be able to, to do over here. We cannot format this, this name. So like this is much more visual. You know that I value very much how visual Notion is. So they have done a step in the, in the right direction in this case. And also the text over here can of course be formatted with bold, everything that you can expect, even mark as code, whatever. Which in the case of the databases, the text here in the title property cannot be formatted. You see that the pop-up doesn't, doesn't appear. We were just able to format all the text that was, for example, in a text property. But we will always have this column with no formatting, which we also, as you know, cannot hide and cannot delete. So it's quite restrictive because again, a database was not thought to be used as a, as a simple table. Another thing that I like a lot about simple tables is that the hyperlinks are clickable directly. And what do I mean by this? Let's say that I have this URL from over here. And let's say that this URL is from a restaurant. So we can just double click it, con command K and paste the page.
page, okay? Let's do now the same over here so we can see the difference. Double click, command K, paste. So now if I wanna click in this link, I will have to first click in the property and then click in the link, okay? Well, he just bring me to the same page because it's the same link. But in this case, you see that this is already clickable, so it is much faster to click hyperlinks in the simple table. And now one little downside of simple tables. As you can see, if I were to delete all the content of the table, I cannot select more than one cell at the same time. I can just select either rows or columns, but I cannot select multiple columns. But in here, I can. So if I want to delete all the content, I just have to select in the database everything and click delete. But in here, I will have to do it by clearing the content one by one. So I hope Notion adds the possibility to select more than one cell. But at the moment, this is not implemented. So honestly, I prefer how the databases behave in this way. So now how to delete the table, as you will expect, just click in the general six dots, because remember that these six dots is just for the row in this case. So we have to click the ones that are outside. So click here and just delete and it will be deleted. This is the same, exactly the same as we will find in the normal database. So no changes here. But now one thing that I love and props to Notion for adding this, let's say that we are creating a table and we find that maybe we need some other properties and not just simple text, let's say a checkbox property. It's like, ah, oh, shit, probably I should have used a database because let's say that I want to add a done checkbox here just to say whether I have done the plan or not. Okay, yes, we can use an emoji, but it's a little bit pain in the ass because we always have to find that emoji. But Notion have us covered. If we are in the need of real database features, we can always go here and turn this into a database. And then we will just have to change this checkbox, this property into a checkbox, sorry, and that is it. But what if the other happens? What if we are using a database and find out that we are actually just using text properties because we just wanna visualize the data. We don't wanna use filters and anything else. We can come here and turn it into a simple table and that's it. But of course, this has some limitations. This just works with simple properties. Okay, so this, this is common sense. If we are using more advanced properties that you wouldn't find in a table, that option will disappear. So let's say that we want to add a formula property. Just at the moment that we add the formula, if we go here, the option to turn the database into a simple table disappears. If we delete it, it appears again, okay? So this same happens with the checkbox property, the relations, rollups, and all these advanced properties. But if we have, let's say, a person property and we add myself, we can turn this still into a simple table that will just be changed to a mention of my name and the same will happen with dates. And here I have found a little trick because remember when we in a database had a checkbox that we just wanted to show the checkbox. So we were trying to make this small, but we were not able to make it as small as just a checkbox. So this was kind of ugly. I don't know about you, but for me, this was a pain. So now we have a workaround to fix this and to make this smaller, we'll just have to, let's say, delete this, make this super, super small, and then convert this into a database, you see that this will be kept and we will just have to change the property into a checkbox and that's it. But now be careful because if you make it bigger, that's it, we lost that opportunity, okay? And we'll have to go back to the simple table and do the process all over again. Let's go back, okay. Now, another good use case that I have found with all of these is that let's say that we have a Google Sheets or our Excel file and that we want to copy the information into Notion. So before we will just copy the text, go to Notion, paste it, and it will be pasted as a database. But now that we have simple tables, we will just have to click these dots, turn into a simple table, and that is it. We will have the information in Notion. So this is a manual, but a very good way to import data from other table-based softwares, such as Google Sheets or Excel. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about the limitations and the things that I didn't really like about this feature. The first one I have already mentioned, we cannot select more than one cell. I personally don't like this. Also, because we cannot select more than one cell, we cannot really merge two cells into one. So let's say that I want to merge all these days into just one. 
I cannot. So we always have to use the cells as they are. We cannot merge them. Also, I'm a very big keyboard fan, so we cannot create new rows or new columns just with our keyboard. Yes, we can move with the keyboard throughout all the cells, but if I hit enter or if I hit tab multiple times, I cannot create new ones. I will always have to use the mouse and create new ones. And this, I hope that they also change. Okay, so now when to use simple tables and when to use databases. Well, for me, as a rule of thumb, whenever we don't care about resurfacing information in other places of our workspace, that will be one indicator to use simple tables. If we don't need to use any fancy properties such as checkboxes or formulas or rollups or relations, and we just want to visualize some data, then we use simple tables. If we don't care about filters, simple tables. If we don't care about sorting, simple tables. And now a different one. If formatting, and with formatting I mean the color that we give to the data and having headers and everything, if this plays an important role to what you are doing, so let's say this little schedule that I built over here, then you will have to use simple tables because databases, as we said, are not as visual as simple tables. And when do we use databases? in all the other use cases. So how am I gonna be using this new feature? The first one, as I have already shown you, for planning trips, I like to plan trips in a table view. In fact, let me go back to my Evernote and you can see how I was planning my trips before, which I love by the way. Just here, dates, itinerary, accommodation, cost, and the days over here. So now I will be able to do all of this. In fact, let's try it in real time. Let's see if I can just copy this into Notion. Okay, with Evernote, it doesn't work. <laughs> Maybe we have to use, yes, Google Sheets or Excel. But yeah, so now I will be able to recreate this in Notion. Another way that we can use this is to compare services. So I remember when I was launching my online course, I wanted to compare Teachable and Podia, which are two course platforms. So the way that I did it, it was like this, but as you may see, it is not very visual. So now I can just turn this into a simple table and oh my God, this looks so much better. Now let's just add the header column and that's it. This looks amazing, okay? And then for some easy planning. So let's say that we want to plan our social media posts. So I will write here the platform, let's say Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and here the day of the week in which we are gonna post. So we can create a very easy weekly schedule for our platforms. So I don't know about you, but I love this new addition. And I think right now Notion are going on a spree of new features. Like not so long time ago, they added the grouping feature, now the simple tables feature. I don't know. I really love how Notion is treating the development of the app. So what do you think? How you are going to be using this new table feature? Are you excited the same way that I am? Tell me everything in the comments because I respond to every single one. So that is it for today, guys. And as always, hasta la próxima.